Welcome to another episode. My name's Jose Naharo, and today we're gonna take a look at Opera Stock. Today we're gonna do something different. I kind of got tired of looking at all these large cap companies that everybody's taking a look at. I actually decided to take a look at some small cap companies, um, which a lot less people are familiar with, and I'm trying to see if I can find a hidden gem somewhere. So I ended up pulling out my screener and my stock screener and ended up putting the metrics I want to see within a stock. So within these metrics, there were, for example, positive earnings, positive profit, profit margins, operating margins, high, very high current ratio so they can, so I know that they're able to, to fund themselves in the short term, very low debt to equity ratio so I know the company is able to, um, say it has enough, enough assets to cover its liabilities. And I ended up finding about 225 stocks. Out of these 225 stocks, I ended up writing them all down and I ended up checking each website for each stock. And the reason I did this is because I honestly believe that one of the important things is to understand the basics of the company and, and uh, so you can understand how the company is truly doing, right? If you guys have seen my previous episodes, I usually do mainly tech companies because as a, I'm an electrical engineer, as an electrical engineer, I'm very familiar with tech companies. Obviously with anything food related, anything in like the real to, real tell space, anything that's easy to understand, you, you would find me doing a video about because I understand the business. I don't know if you guys have seen my BMY episode, which was a pharmaceutical episode. That was actually what I say one of my worst episodes because I'm not familiar with the healthcare sector. So after doing that video, I ended up deciding to honestly only do videos and only do companies that I truly understand and would truly invest in. So I checked those 225 companies, I checked all their websites and ended up writing down which companies I, un I could understand. So out of those 225s, I think I dropped it down to 30 and then out of those 30s, I'm gonna break it down even more, but Opera, O-P-R-A, Opera, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, um, what's one of my favorite ones? I've kind of known them. I'll, I'll talk about what the company does and maybe some of you guys might see them. If you guys are overseas, you might definitely know what this company is doing. Maybe not what the stock is doing, but what the company does. So I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. Like always, I have my buddies Bull, Bull Solo and Darth Bear ready to keep track to let me know how this company is doing. All right, so before we begin, all the information I've collected either comes from Opera's investors website. I've also used SeekingAlpha.com um, for news and any, any future analysts reports. And finally, I took a look at MarketWatch.com to just pull out like past, past, re past returns on the company and the chart of the company. First thing is let's just do a quick stock price review. In the past five days, the company is down 12%. In the past month, 12.1%. In the past three months, down 14.6%. Year to date is actually up 63%. And then the past year is up 40%. It's 52 week high and low is $5.31, all the way up to $15. And right now it's sitting right in between at around $9. So let's start off with revenue. So revenue. Quarter to non-gap earnings per share of five cents. And then it had gap of earnings per share of three cents and it beat by five cents. Revenue of 61.73 million is up 55% year to year and it beats by six million. So right, we see we have positive earnings per share. We see this company is growing revenue pretty heavy, has a 55% year to year growth and it's currently running at 61 million dollars of revenue per quarter that's actually not not too bad it's definitely a small cap smaller than most companies we're seeing billion dollar revenues in other companies but it's definitely not a small amount so obviously the first point i'm gonna have to give to bull solo for that be in earnings per share and the beat in revenue so this was for their earnings of their last earnings which was announced august 22nd their most but their most quarter three earnings is gonna happen in November 11th. First, if you have not heard about Opera, um, this might be the main reasons. They mainly work overseas. They, know, they focus in Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Africa, and South Asia. They also, um, and the rest of Europe, Middle East, and Asia markets. And what are they? They, they do, they pretty much have, the main thing they do is they have an, a browser, a, a website browser. 
and they have different forms they have opera mini opera for android opera for computers opera touch they also like i have they have opera gx which is for gamers and they all have their special things the reason they are pretty strong in like these these countries in africa and middle east is opera mini is actually a, a, a browser that makes sure that you use the least amount of data as possible and most of these countries they're very conscious of how much data they use just because of the cost of data um, might not be might not be as cheap as it is in other places so they have to be conscious of how much data they spend and opera mini is that is doing pretty strong in those countries then like i said they have all types of the of difference besides browsers they also have a, a news a news application which is called opera news which they use right to just report news they have ads there next they have something called micro lending so micro lending is pretty much just a small loan um, leveraging company where they give small loans to customers and actually it's pretty cool how they do it they verify people by face recognitions and stuff like this and usually we I took a look the loans are usually pretty small it's like sub $100 uh, next they have something called Olist and Opay, O-Ride and All Foods so Opay is like PayPal All Ride is like Uber Eats it's like Uber O Food is like Uber Eats and then they have Olist, which is like Craigslist. So they have a lot of these, a lot of these online-based payment applications. So now let's continue. Let's just let me just show you how much this company is growing. Um, year to year, from 2016 to 2017, the company grew total revenue by 20 percent. From 2017 to 2018, the company grew revenue by 34 percent. If we're just taking a look, remember this is for quarter two. If we're only looking at the first half of 2018 and the first half of 2019 this company grew 41 percent year to date that is ridiculous i'm pretty sure this 2018 to 2019 we're going to continue to see a nice 30 over 30 percent year to year revenue growth now let's take a look at smartphone and pc average monthly active users so monthly active users have grown 12 percent from 2016 to 2017 16 percent from 2017 to 2018 and for the second half of 2018 for the second half of 2019 they grew 20% then they have this is opera news as a whole so people browsing people looking at all types of applications not just on their phones um, you can see the steady growth from quarter one quarter two 2019 and, and all these years right it's just a steady increase so now let's take a look at comparable sales so comparable sales the first thing we want to know is revenue like I mentioned was 61 Point seven million this quarter that was a year of 55 percent year-to-year growth exceeding their top range guidance that's that's insane when 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 they when they show that they have strong users with monthly active users averaging 227 million for smartphones that's up 24 percent year-to-year and 65 million for pc up 14 percent year-to-year Opera News users grew 61% to over 163 million year to year. And the Opera News app launched in 2018 and it reached 37 million active monthly active users of 362% year to year. Obviously, 362% is based on starting from nothing and going dramatically high. So how, how does this company make money? Like I mentioned, one of the main reasons they make money is they have the, the the browser so with the browser they have search engine they have search engine sales and they also have advertising sales so then the other way they make money is just from all the opay all the other they have the the micro lending so whatever they loan they loan at an interest and after that the revenue they collect from their opay o eats o list and all those so advertising and search growth rates accelerated year to year supported by the success the successful launch of Opera Ads platform. So this is actually you can see how new this company is. It's pre, it's it's so new that they actually this past year is when they first released ads on their on their browser. So they still have not been collecting they have not been collecting as much revenue in that as they could. And now with it being released, they're increasing the revenue from there. So just for perspective, the three months of June 30th, 2018 to June 30th 2019 
Last year, they had $90 million in sales on search ads. This year, they had $21 million. Last year, they had $13.7 million in advertising. This year, they had $16.1 million. They had fees and interest collected from, um, from all their, their loans, right? They had this last year, they didn't have any. This year, they had about $11.5 million, right? So now they have a few new section of revenue collected. Um, and you can see, right, they are growing pretty strong in revenue. And the cost of revenue has not actually grown that much. Cost of revenue um, last quarter was one point, last year was 1.4 million. This year is 10 million. But when they're increasing revenue by that much, um, this company is definitely, is definitely growing. So let's continue with them. Opera micro lending business continues to exceed expectations and they now have a revenue run rate exceeding $45 million. The upside driven by successful continued growth in Kenya and expansion in India, like I mentioned, right? This company is strong in Africa and Southeast Asia. They provide about 1.8 billion microloans in this quarter. Just this quarter alone, they provided 1.8 million of microloans. And this 1.8 million microloans this quarter is up from 766,000 from the first quarter, right? It's only been two quarters since this came out. So this is, you can see this continue, this continued growth happening. Oh, so obviously for comparable sales, we're going to have to give another point to Bull Solo, right? Comparable sales is just to help me determine how the company is doing compared to the same time last year. Um, and it's actually doing good. We're seeing growth in monthly active users. We're seeing growth in rev all forms of revenue. We're seeing increase in different sectors of revenue. So we're seeing this company provide new forms of revenue. And obviously for that reason, Bull Solo has to get a point here. Next, what I'm gonna do is do things to note here. We're not gonna give any points to either Bull Solo or Third Bear. This is just to talk about how the company is doing and, and, and where it's going. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Opera News. Um, they now they are now the only news app that is portable across all major markets of Africa, and they are the most preferred news app in key ma um, key markets, including Nigeria and Kenya, with more than seventy eight percent brand awareness. In addition to India, they launched in the second quarter. They now launched Opay in Nigeria. So Opay just launched this quarter on India, and they have recently launched it in Nigeria. Opay raising $50 million of external funding, which include Opera maintaining an ownership stake of just 20%. So that's pretty good. I mean, they're not, they're not fully responsible. They have a little bit less than 20% ownership, but 20% ownership of a company making money is still money being made. In June, like I mentioned, they launched the Opera GX browser, which is the first ever gaming browser. Early results and the positive products review are very encouraging. Search revenue, like I, sent, like I mentioned, search revenue represents 35% of the total revenue at about $21.4 million, and it's up 8% year to year. That said, they do communicate that they expect revenue to continue to grow from search revenues, right? They expect revenue to keep growing, but the percentage is to be expected. They want to increase the percentage of overall revenues in other things. So even though right now, um, it's 35% of the total revenue. They expect next quarter to be lower percentage just because they expect the other as the other revenue generating objects to improve their the, the amount of revenue collected. They made the new initiative, like I mentioned, to at the end of quarter two, they started O List. O List is like I mentioned Craigslist, where it's a classified product that they they launched, they just soft launched in Nigeria in August. Was August August month. Um, within the month, they already have 50,000 authorized advertisers that live within, um, that live with 0.5 million listings on their site. So like, right, O-List is pretty new. It's a, a little bit like Craigslist, maybe like eBay type of store. And this is the first time that they just released it. So, right, they're still, they're, they're revamping what they need to do. They're providing new types of products. And like they said, they say they focus on building up good service and traffic at this point and not yet on generating revenue, which I think is pretty smart, right? If you're coming out with something new, you want more people to come in first. Right now you want to focus that you have that you have no bugs, that you have the proper, that everything is flowing pretty good for the customer so they can, they can review your product and tell other customers, hey, you guys should check out this website, you guys should check out this app. And then once they have a steady 
a steady growth of users, that's when they start focusing more on revenue. So now let's take a look at future plans. So for future plans here, obviously, um, I can't say if the plans themselves are smart um, because I can't see into the future, but I at least like to know that the company has some form of roadmap of where it wants to go. First thing, obviously, they want to continue is to continue growth in browser users and news platforms. And they just achieved this by marketing and through distributions and partnerships. Like I said, their browser, the main reason I found their browser, even though they're based mainly outside of, of the United States, their browsers, their gaming browsers is hitting us here in the United States through YouTube ads. And I'm pretty sure most of you might have seen those ads on YouTube. So they're focusing this by, by increasing their marketing. Second, they are focusing on increasing monetization, and this is by using their ads. Um, so they're selling their ads, and now with Opera ads um, being released, they're, they're, they accepted a new form of revenue. Third, they're leveraging the Opera brand and user base to drive opportunities in other markets. So right, they're using that they have such a strong brand in Opera with all this news and with the browsers that, hey, now they have the contact information of all the users and they can send out a website, hey, we just released um, this micro lending. And now they have a huge following on their micro lending. Then they're doing with the O list, right? They send out a, a, a email to all the people using, or they might just put like, um, they might just put some form of banner on their on their browser, hey, check out O list. And this helps them grow the other companies a lot faster. So like they mentioned, Opera News has rapidly become a leading service in the content platform space and key metrics and their success of micro lending business is another great example of how they build how building their presence helps them out when they start new companies finally they have invested in business supported by favorable underlying trends where opera can make a difference right so these underlying trends are like uber uber eats and craigslist and paypal right they understand that these are trends happening and if they're not and if if these big companies are not heading there then might as well let's just start it ourselves next we're going to take a look at shareholder return like you guys most likely knew for most growing companies you see no shareholder returns at this time they're most likely even diluting shares um i have to take a look at their new 10 at the new 10q report but um no shareholder returns no dividends and no typical no shareholder buyback at this moment they're most likely just trying to get money to reinvest and create the growth so obviously here we're going to have to give a point to bah, 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 Darth Bear. So now let's talk about that. So first thing is this company, not just about that. Let's just talk about the company's balance sheet, right? As a whole, this company has a strong cash balance, cash and cash equivalents of $134 million this year. Unfortunately, same time um, at the end of December, 2018 so about nine months six months ago before this was shown uh, this company had 177 million dollars of cash cash equivalents so this company burned about 30 million dollars in cash and cash equivalents um, so that's definitely not a good thing to see but one thing i'm happy to see is that one total liabilities right now is sitting at 72 million dollars they last year last um six months ago is at 50 million so it grew about 20 million but we can still see liabilities is way lower than cash and cash equivalents. It's almost half lower, right? So this company has enough cash and cash equivalents to pay off its total liabilities. So one, I like that a lot. Then this company has a huge total assets of $852 million. But I was taking a look at the uh, asset distribution and about $200 million of that total asset is Goodwill. So Goodwill is actually fake, um, fake assets. Uh, but now... They do, one thing is that they do have loans to customers. So their loans to customers, they have about 22 million of loans to customers and that's being financed by their cash balance. So 22 million of that, of that should, could go back to the cash and cash equivalent eventually. So that 134 is actually 166. So now taking a look at that, that's not as bad. 166, they only went down $10 million in cash and cash equivalents and actually i'm not sure how i didn't see that earlier but that's um that's good things to know right if they have 22 million dollars of of loans to customers they did mention that they financed those loans by their own cash and cash equivalents so now let's take a look at some of the some of their liabilities and current assets so one thing i'd like to look is receivables 
and payables, one of the things is I want to see receivables greater than payables. And here the, it is receivables is about $40 million where payables is $32 million. So receivables is higher than payables. And like I mentioned, liability, total liability is half of cash and cash equivalent. So total liability is not even half of the current assets. Current assets is, um, current assets is about 3.5 times bigger. If we're taking a look just at cash and cash equivalents, this is quick ratio. This is a quick asset. It's liability is, ha is less than half of the total cash. That to me is amazing. This cash balance is pretty, pretty good. The total, the total um, balance sheet is amazing. So for that, I'm going to have to give a point to Paul Solo. So next, let's take a look at the company's cash flow. So uh, originally, I was not a huge fan of the cash flow. They did hit a negative cash flow this quarter, sitting at negative 16 million cash, negative cash flow from operating activities. And I definitely like to see this positive. But now that I started to think about it, looking at the last slide, some of this negative cash flow may have happened from the financing they're using to give out loans to customers. So that's definitely a def, um, definitely something to keep in mind. Same time last year, this company had a positive $10 million in, in cash flow. Total net cash flow this year is $35 million loss compared to a $5 million gain same time last year. This company right now only has $134 million in cash. So if this cash flow statement continues burning how it is, this company only has about four more quarters before this company burns its total cash. But like I mentioned, I'm pretty confident that some of this $35 million in cash flow loss is going out for, for the lending side of their company. So hopefully they, this company, obviously this company is going to realize, hey, we can't give out too much cash uh, because we don't want to burn our supply. So this is something I'm definitely going to take a look at in the next quarter. Next, let's take a look at out outlook based on analysts. The first thing is we're going to take a look at annual earnings per share. So annual earnings per share this year is expected to be 27 cents. And that's a forward PE ratio of 36.9. It's definitely, I definitely don't think that's bad based that this is a growing company and it's going to continue to grow at these rates, in my opinion, for, for, for a long time. Um, if they're just being released in companies in countries like India, um, a few quarters ago, then imagine when they become a stable, a stable name in those companies and continue to grow elsewhere. In December 20, 20, in December of 2020, this company is expected to make earnings per share of 56 cents, which gives a forward PE ratio of 17.47. 17.47 for a small cap growth company, I think is actually a, a pretty cheap price. So I'm really liking it. In revenue, revenue in 2018 was 178 million. In 2018 and 19, it's going to be 274 million. And in 2020, they expect 360 million. So these are all estimations minus that 2018, 2018. This company actually provided 178 million dollars of revenue. And in 2019, they're expected to provide 275. I'm repeating that number just because you guys, we, we need to see. Um, we're going to need to, to take a look at, um, at that number in a bit. But this is looking pretty good. Earnings per share is growing. Revenue is growing. Forward PE ratio is decreasing. Forward price to sales ratio is decreasing. So I'm going to have to give another point to Bull Solo on this one. Um, this is actually a company I am feeling like I'm going to invest the moment um, market opens today. So now we're going to take a look at outlook based on company on the company. They did raise their revenue expectations. So previously they had a 230 million to 240 million expectation range on their on their revenue. But now they're they increased their percentage to 270 million to 290 million. Right, that 200 um, analysts expect 274. This company says that 270 is on their loan range. So they're actually, I'm pretty sure they're going to be expectation. And that would mean that this company at minimum is going to grow 57% revenue year to year growth. For the third quarter, they expect revenue to be in the range of 75 million to 85 million, which is almost a 75 to 100% year to year growth. So this company, right, raising expectations is always a good thing. And look at this. This guidance does not include contributions from newer initiatives such as OLIS. So if OLIS does better than anticipated, this revenue is going to be higher. So I definitely expect this company to beat expectations 
and I'm actually pretty, pretty, pretty ex hyped. I, I'm, I'm excited about this company. Um, so obviously another point to bull solo. So at the current price, I'm pretty sure this current price is even less now that the company, this forward PE ratio is less based that this company dropped about 6%, I think just yesterday to, to $9. So I'm, def I'm definitely going to pick up some shares of this company. I hope you guys enjoyed the com the episode. Let me know. Do you guys want me to take a look at, at smaller companies like I just did today? Or should I go back to taking a look at large cap companies, at companies that everyone knows about? Um, so take care, guys. Have a good night and see you next time.